guys, we start our full guide on how to be every single part of the new raid, aka incursion. I'm calling it a mini raid because that's what it is, guys. To me, it felt like a raid built for four players. And maybe that's what incursions were, right? So it was definitely a challenge. And if you don't have the right builds, you're going to struggle. But once you feel the builds out, it's really the gaming mechanics. And I will tell you, I don't feel like it's all about DPS on this one. I feel like having a little bit of everything helps you out. And each section, I kind of used a different build for each one. So this first section, I will say what you want to do is really push to the area we did right now. You're going to push to the middle of the courtyard, if you want to say. Um... All we did is we had a healer and then we had three DPS and we were just clearing the area. So for this section, there are two turrets you need to take down. There's gonna be one on the right and one on the left. Now the one on the left is going to be the first one we go and all you need is one person to really go after it. So it's actually gonna be here on the left if you look. You can actually see it right in front of me. And let me show you exactly what you're looking for. You wanna get on that ledge right above me. So this ledge right here, this is the first ledge you wanna get on and you wanna aim right in here. You just need one guy to do this while the other three guys are clearing and maybe one healer. And you shoot that, it's going to disable the left turret. So like I said, the guy's up there. I was on clear ad duty, right? Um, my other guy was on there and then we had one healer. And then all right here, we just had the big guys. He shot the turret. Once he disables it, you can see the explosion. Then you wanna rotate to the right side. And all we're gonna do is we rotate as a group, right? This mission, this raid, this incursion, well, all it's about is teamwork. Having really good teamwork makes it so much easier. And what we're gonna do is we keep going right here. You see it's clearing ads. This is what you guys are gonna have to do. Just clear ads, whatever you guys need to do. Um, I'm, I'm over here, I'm focusing on this big guy. I don't want him to come after us. So just trying to get him down. You can run a lot of different builds. I currently on, on this account, I was actually running a Cavalier set for my team. So that's why the DPS wasn't there, but I was running a Cavalier set. Why my other guy was running two DPS and one here. So we wanna do the next turret you see it above me, right? You're gonna wanna come right here and there's gonna be a turret you need to climb up here to get. So right in front of you, there's gonna be another one right there you wanna shoot, you disable it and boom, that's it. Once you do that, all you have to do is add clear. So just clear out the area, finish any last enemies, and it'd be complete. So once you finish this area, you're just gonna move on to the next area. Now the boss is in this tanker yard, right? Once you go in this yard, this will be a checkpoint. So if you do wipe, you'll start right here. So you see this tanker right here? This is what starts the mission. And this is pretty much what you're doing. You defend the oil tanker. Now what I'll tell you is, what we had is we had one healer, two almost all red DPS, and then I was a protection from elites kind of tank build. So I was actually focused on this side over here. Now I didn't have a ton of damage, but we wanted to try this out. I think you could actually do this with three, three DPS builds, but I was able to stay over here because what I'm doing is I am watching for when those big, those big guys come out. Like there's a few that come out with a flame turret and then there's some that come out with the minigun. Now the ones that come out with the minigun do damage on the oil tanker. Now another thing you need to worry about is the snipers. The snipers like to shoot from cover, but just to give you guys a heads up, you see the little diamond that are above each of the enemies, one died there, and the water, there's one above. Those are the ones that can do damage on the oil tanker. The other guys aren't doing any damage. Like the ad clearing is just a clear ad. You don't have to worry about those. The ones you really need to worry about are the snipers or the the big guys with the, the mini guns. And, and as long as you guys can take care of those, it should be a really easy one. This was probably the easier out of all of them. Hardly any coordination, just literally have to melt the enemies before they can melt you and make sure they don't do damage to the oil tanker. It might take a little bit of teamwork, but again, I was down here with the protection from Elite's build. The other three guys were up top, they were getting healed, and my job was really just to focus this side and do as much damage as I could. I was running the Scorpio, had some pretty good armor, so they would focus me. Look, look, this guy right here, you see how has the minigun? This is the guys you have to worry about, and he has the diamond on his head, right? The, the, the orange diamond. Once you do that, it's over, right? Like, he, he won't be able to, he may focus you, but his job, right, is to destroy the oil tanker, and that's all you have to do. Just make sure you can damage him right there, and once you do that, it's pretty much it, right? So on waves that have the diamonds, really focus on those guys first. You'll have the miniguns, and then you also have the snipers. Once you do that, 
you should be fine and your oil tanker will be good this is probably the easier battle as i said now there will be a point where you get some striker drones right now when you see the striker drones that's when you know you have two more waves two more waves so clear out the striker drones once you clear those guys out then you'll have two waves of enemies so the first wave will come out and they're going to have the mini guns so they're going to be trying to put out dps towards that oral tanker so both of these waves will have multiple big guys with mini guns and multiple snipers so that's why you need dps players on this portion and maybe a healer to keep them up again you, what you're going to want to do is just focus on these guys to drop them. And again, once you guys finish these this wave, you have one more wave. So just clear that wave of enemies. Try to focus the guys with the diamonds. Obviously, they're going to have mini guns. They're going to be easy to look. And any snipers that have the diamond over their head. You Once you clear this area right here, recommend leaving one to two enemies alive. Try to leave the guys with the shields. I'll tell you, the reason why is because you want to pile up at the door. And there's a reason for that because when the guy comes out, he's going to be blasting his minigun. So everybody come over here. You can see we have the sniper alive, right? Um, once we finish him, it's going to spawn. So once I do that, boom, instantly he comes out blasting and you just want to be able to DPS him down. We had a healer. We had just straight damage. And, he, and that's all you need. Just uh, someone healing you guys and the damage is over and then that will be your first boss clear for our next boss area we have the bar so let me show you guys i like to split this up into four sections because there's four different right in front of us that's the dance floor this right here is your bar room that's what we call it you see the big circles keep track of that that will be have water dropping on it you have the stage up here and then over here you have your seating area now you'll notice little squares or circles and this is where water drops down this is what cools down the boss which allows you to put damage on him so you need to get him under the sprinkler system and cool him off now the switches you need to look for are in the room that he spawns in now each switch is tied to a certain room so let's break that down for you real quick so this one on the far left you can see it has a picture of seats and then it has three squares now that's the seating area. Remember I showed you at the beginning? Now this one right here has two circles and you can actually see the little table in the middle of it. So this is the dance floor area, the main area when you first come in. And this is to the left of that big opening. Now to the right of this is another one. Now this one is for the stage. It's the area that's right next to the big opening. And it's this one to the right right here. If we look closer to it, you can actually see the opening and then there's two squares right where Havoc's at. That controls that one right there. And our final one is this one right here to the far right and this controls the bar area you can see it has three circles and then has little drinks obviously it's the bar area so those are the areas that you need to bring the boss into so that way he gets water on him and you can put damage out so we have four areas four switches and what we did is we had two guys straight ad clear and two guys were controlling the tip that i give for you if you really want to grab the eye you see the eye he's on me you want to be at the very front and you want to kind of shoot a little bit so he chases you then the guy who's going to be on the switches with you who switches back and forth you're going to be here and you're going to have him come once he's in that square i tell him to hit the switch boom dps round now you just in the dps you can see the bar at the top going down da damage 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 just do as much damage as you can and clear ads when you can now whoever hits that valve is going to take over the eye so what that means is that's why it's easier to have two got two designated guys for boss control so i know he has the eye right so my duty is to go in there and i'm managing the valves now one thing you need to do also is at the very top you'll see a pressure gauge that's either going to allow you to dump water on the enemy or not so that one you can see it says 99 this one says 71 but again this is the communication that you have to have with you and your teammate he the guy who has the aggro has to tell you when he's either going in the middle or not you also have to tell him where you have pressure right so i told him i have pressure in the middle he tells me hit the valve right now we release the pressure the water comes down so they're able to put damage i'm able to focus on this ad clean right here to kind of help out the team a little bit now while you guys are doing all this there will be waves where everything kind of gets a little too hot and there's a little explosion so you can get into cover it won't kill you from what I've noticed, but it will take a huge chunk of your armor away. So I was in cover, you saw, I was fine. Now, 
Now that I hit the valve, you see I have the I, and you just keep doing this over and over and over. The smoother you can do this, the better it's going to be. The big key for this is really just the communication between you and your teammates really hitting this. I recommend everybody having a reviver hive. So if you go down, you just get back up. Now, if you do go down, then someone else will get the eye. And that's the one time you need to figure out what you're gonna do. So since Wyvern hit the valve, we know he has the eye again, and then we're back at it. So ideally what you wanna do is make sure each teammate knows uh, their position, what they need to do. Again, me and Wyvern were on boss duty. Everybody else was on ad duty, splitting up all four sections to the stage, dance floor, bar room, or seating area helped us out a lot. Maybe it'll help you guys out. But again, all you need to do is make sure you clear ads. As soon as he gives you the word that, hey, I'm in position or I'm going to so-and-so position, then you know, okay, you can hit the switch. Um, one thing I'll tell you is ad clearing is very crucial. You don't want them to kind of overwhelm you um, and it can cause some issues with being overwhelmed, getting too much damage taken. But again, if your guy who has the eye goes down, as you saw right here, then the next guy has to be ready to go to the spot that they need to. So they kind of need to know what's going on too. They can't just go in there blind. So this will probably be a good video for you guys to show. So as you see, he was in the square. I hit the water. It was a DPS phase. And then you can see once he doesn't have that immune anymore, you guys can do damage, 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 damage. And then you just have to repeat this over and over. So as we're watching this, I do want to um, kind of give you guys some tips. One tip would be if you guys have your teammates run survivalists, when you pop a med kit, everybody shares that med kit. Or if they pop it for you, they share it. Also, that purple flame that's on the ground is deadly. You do not want to run in it. So just be very careful there. That's something also you don't want to do. But this shield, the big shield, I found if you're going to be the runners, is great because it can take the damage and he won't hit a huge chunk of your armor off. So I always recommend the two guys who are running this, run the big shield. The big shield will protect you from going down. And then whoever has the eye, same thing. Avoid the purple. And then over and over, we just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until we're done. And you can see we're, we're, almost, we're almost done with it. You saw that big explosion. That was the one I was telling you guys, try to get in cover if you can. You saw how much armor it took off of me. But I'm gonna let you listen to some of the communication so you guys can see how we like to call things out. When he's there, and then I'll get you. Good. Yep. Come on, let's get some DPS on him. Let's get some damage on him now. Yo, we need to help. You gotta clear out the uh, clear out the chungas. The chungas, the big chungas. The, don't worry about the little ones. The big ones, the big ones. You guys clear those out while I'm doing this. They're weak points, guys. They're weak points. Right, I'm gonna do it right here in the front, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got my shield out. Wait, one sec, one sec. Oh. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damage, damage. I will clear the chunga. I shocked him. Oh, all right. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's the last one. We potentially could do this on the last one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got one more. We got one more. Take the chunk is fast. Yeah, help him, help him. Are you good over there, Cheesy, or no? Where do you want to go? Uh, yeah, I'm good. Okay, Wait, you know, someone needs to pick, up, pick him up. Cheese drop cheese a hive. Up. Drop a hive, guys. Use your hive to pick him up. I've dropped a hive. All right, so gonna we're going to do... Which one can we do? Oh, that one right there. Right there. Right there. Right, right where you're at. Wyvern, oh, right, right, right there. Right there. Tell me where. Tell me when he's in the store. No. No, no, no. All right, got it. Yep, we can finish yep, it, we yep. can finish it, we can finish it right now. Kill him. That cleaner is just a man. A man potentially on fire. Still a man. Kill his ass. Now's your chance. Oh. Oh. There you go, baby. Oh. And all you have to do is clear the area after that. Nothing else. 
um, here. Once you kill the boss, it's just really ad clear, and that is it. Once you do that, you're completely done with it, and that should be your second boss. And then we just have the final area, so let's get into it, guys. I want to say this one was probably the easier one to do. Um, the last one was definitely a lot harder than this one this one is just really figuring out the game mechanics but once i explain it to you guys it's going to be pretty simple so when you first go into this area you'll have your two bosses right at the top what you want to do as a team is you want to float to the right we literally had three striker dps builds and one one healer and then our striker dps builds had some protection from elites on it so what you're going to want to do is push to the right now, when you start the battle, the first thing you guys have to worry about is the boss will shoot two mortars. So just dodge those two mortars initially. Once you dodge those two mortars initially, you want to put DPS on the boss, right? So the guy you can do DPS on is going to be the one that doesn't have a drone over his head. So right here, we have the big boy here. So we're literally just putting DPS onto him. Now, once you do enough DPS, he's going to request a drone. You'll see like a little symbol above his head that says like, send me the fixer drone, please. That's when you as a team need to call out fixer drone or drone and everybody needs to focus that to drop it. Once you drop that, that is your first DPS phase, your first DPS phase. So you could just focus either one of them. I will tell you, Johnson is the weaker of the two. So we focused that boss first, but you could do DPS to both of them. But that's going to be the one you want. Now, on the first DPS phase, she will throw out a sniper turret almost every time. And then she's going to be trying to fix the fixer drone. Just focus. Damage, 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 damage. Now, while this is all going down... The other boss is going to pop a flare. And when he pops the flare, that is a mortar round. Well, what I, what we did and we found was easiest is we did a big circle to go all the way around. So we would literally do a big U shape and end up on the other stairs. You see how we were on the right side of the stairs? Now we make it all the way around to the left side of the stairs. And that's personally what I would do. If you guys are struggling with this, float all the way around and hopefully you can get out of these turret, the mortar turrets, they'll get going. And then soon, once they're done, then you can work on going for DPS phase number two. So same thing, what you wanna do is just, as soon as you can do damage to them, do as much damage as possible. The healer is crucial though, guys. The healer in this part makes it so much easier because as soon as he requests that fixer drone, you can go straight to a DPS phase. As you see, we messed up right there. And that's what happens. The longer you can't take to do this, the worse it gets, right? So I'll tell you, if, if you mess up and you don't hit that fixer drone, he will start healing them. So right here, what we need to do is focus the sniper turret because that bad boy can one tap you. I will tell you having the shield kind of helps out um, because sometimes it hit the shield. Having some protection from elites on your striker build helps out for your three DPS players. And again, once you do enough damage, you see the drone. You want to hit the drone because every time you destroy that drone before it goes to the other one, that is a DPS phase. That means you can focus the boss. The faster you can drop the first boss, then you don't have to worry about them fixing. Now, as you go through these waves, the Johnson, he'll throw a, a sniper turret, which you have to be careful of. But he will also, he's also going, sometimes he drops what it's called his healing box. Now, that healing box, you want to drop it too because it can literally heal the whole team up instantly. If you could drop that quick and then just focus DPS on them, you can get through them pretty quick as you guys are seeing. This didn't take us too long. I'm actually showing you guys the whole battle. And the same thing, damage, 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 damage. As soon as he pops the flare again, you know the mortars are coming. And you do the same thing. You want to rotate back around, right? So I sent three guys to the left and I went to the, I went to the right. And you'll see, I went back around. Them three went that way. Ideally, all three of you go. I went this way because I was trying something new. I wanted to be able to clear a couple of the ads that were over here. So they were on that side and I knew I took the risk, right? But ideally, you want to stick together. Now, as soon as the mortars stop going, that's when you guys can start working on the DPS phase again. As you're about to see right now, they actually have the fixer drone up. So I know, okay, DPS phase is about to happen and you'll start to see the numbers on him. Ideally, put as much damage as you can because he calls, he calls a drone and you just wanna focus that drone. Again, if you mess up and you're unable to kill the drone, then it, it slows down the process. But 
Once you finish that drone, it's already a DPS phase, so you know what you guys need to do. And on this phase, you're gonna see us actually drop Johnson, and you'll see in a second, he, we're gonna have enough damage. He's trying to fig, do the fixer drone. We're damage, 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 all headshots, he lines up for you. And once he does that, boom. Now, when that happens, the other boss gets enraged and he shoots a flare up. So he actually shoots two mortars at a time. So it'd be mortar, mortar, a little bit of a break, mortar, mortar, a little bit of a break. So during those breaks, you just need to clear ads and do damage. And, and that's pretty much it, guys. Nothing else to it. Probably, like I said, it's tough at first with randoms, especially if you don't know the game mechanics, and hopefully this video helps a lot of you guys get through it. Two of my guys actually got the Ouroboros, but again, all you have to do is focus, focus, focus. Um, healer helps, three DPS helps. The DPS guys, we put a little bit of protection from elites on our builds, but we had striker builds and pretty much what we ran for, for this part, part right here. So most of you guys have a striker build. Um, I ran the chest. It worked good, and you can just see a million to the head. But again, this, I wanna say this raid, this incursion is all about teamwork um, and some kind of builds. But once you get the builds together, once you get the teamwork together, it's a lot easier than it, it seems, right? So definitely takes a little bit of coordination, but I feel like it's more coordination than really um, mechanics because the mechanics are there, but they're not as hard as like the raid. And once you finish them, that's it. Now, you remember the Ouroboros has a chance of dropping from each boss, so that's 1%, and then the box at the end has a 10% chance. I didn't get it, but we ended up getting two in our group. So both my teammates, so I either have to wait till next week to do it again or do it on another character pretty much. Now, once you clear the area, you'll be able to open the box, and then the box is here, so... Enjoy, guys. Hopefully, this video helps you guys out. Hopefully, it helps everybody who's trying to clear it. Um, I'll work on some of the builds that I use for the raid that I think would work good. I tried a few um, and was able to clear a few sections, but I don't think they were really efficient. I think something like this will help you out. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Hey, nothing but skills out. Take it easy, everybody.